days being hung over. Leaning yes. <laughs> over somebody's toilet. Yeah. Imagine that. Yes. Throwing up. <laughs> or the back of somebody's yard throwing up. Yeah. And then having a hang hangover yeah. that would not quit. Yeah. Right. But being high in the Holy Ghost.
but they wasn't able to take it. You need to understand. Somebody say process. process. So in the kingdom of God, we have to have some thick skin. Yes. That's it. That's right. Amen. Yes. Somebody say thick skin. Thick skin. Hallelujah, brother Kenny. Because the devil is not playing fair. That's right. And neither should we. Woo! Hallelujah. So we're laying the foundation tonight for what we want to talk about. Now, this is being recorded, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to use code for this because they didn't, um, they didn't struck two of my YouTube channels. They took two of them off. Oh, wow. Primarily because I talked about C19. You know what C19 is, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. I made these up to prepare for all the liars in Washington. In every other place. Somebody say liars. liars. We're not going to let the enemy come into this new jurisdiction and do what he did the last time. Amen. So what we're going to do, we're going to pass these flyers. And I've already been passing out flyers today. <laughs> along with some people getting healed. Oh, Saying if they need prayer for C-19, <laughs> cause. Yes. Amen. In state or out of state. Yes. Because the scripture says, if there's any sick among you, let them do what? Go for the church. Yes. Yes. So we're ready. Amen. 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 Yes. We're not going to play with the devil this time. Come on. We didn't play last time, but, we, but we're ready this time. Mm -hmm. Now, for all of you that are on board, yes. you're welcome to take a copy. We can run some copies of these bad boys and put them out. If you want to put your name, buy it. And your telephone number, have got it. Seriously. Because this, the time that we've been at the altar for these months, now it's going to start to pay dividends. Now it's going to start to pay dividends because now we're going to start to utilize all the impartation that was received in our time of intimacy. A lot of things can happen and will happen in an environment where the, where the atmosphere is charged. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yes. We're not going through the motions. Mm. Mm. We want every church, to be honest with you, we want every church to be fired up and ready for battle. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When Brendan and I was in Morgan City on Sunday, the power of God fell. And one of the mistresses of ceremony made him, she just slipped up and said, revival is here. <laughs> now, you know, we don't, we don't deliberately come in and make ourselves, I mean, and show out. But one person got healed. He had an he um, oxygen tank on. He had been dealing with some type of pneumonia. Once we, once we spoke over him, immediately he took that thing off and just started hollering. I said, this is okay. <laughs> and then we, then we followed up on him, what was it, yesterday? Yeah. Turned out that when he got home, all that stuff that he had been wearing to church, he threw that to the side of it. It was moving on without our feet. Praise God. And then there was another one the very next day, right here on Catherine Street. God got out of the car. I seen him. As I was coming out the store, he was wearing one of those little portable oxygen deck tanks. Took the time to pray with him immediately, his lungs started to expand and he was able yeah. to breathe. Yeah. Oh, Jesus! Yeah. Now, the difference between what I'm telling you now in healing in times past, this is about empowering the people of God so they can do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're not trying to idolize men. You understand that? Yeah. We want you to understand that God wants to use you the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! So, we're going to take the time to pray for the big bad C-19. Hallelujah. And we're going to tell it to bow. Somebody say sickness and disease. Sickness and disease. It's not my portion. It's not my portion. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. It's very difficult to pray for something that you're afraid of. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Now, if you confront a situation, before we get into our text, 
that you pray for something and it doesn't seem like it's breaking? Somebody say plan B. Plan B. Back up. <laughs> Call back up. <laughs> Whether it's one, two, or five, it doesn't matter as long as deliverance is taking place. As long as we are winning, that's okay. Do not suffer in silence. If you need somebody to help you pray the big bad C-19 off you, call them. And that's okay. Oh, hallelujah. I feel like running here tonight. Hallelujah. But I'm going to be nice for now. Hallelujah. But every time the enemy tries to bring some confrontation, my eyes just light up like a Christmas tree. Because an opportunity for the saints of God to show you the authority that you truly have. Yes. And the things of God. And let me, and this is going to be tied together with what we want to talk about tonight. Prayerfully. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We want you to experience the presence of God on a different level. Everybody yes, who preaches and teaches carries a grace. Yes. Amen. And we want you to be a partaker of the time that we spend before the Lord. Amen. Now, the things I text many of you today about all the healings that took place, that's just for today. That, that did, that's not a clue what happened yesterday and the day before and the day before that. And even on what was supposed to be our anniversary, we were still getting, getting people delivered. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we love people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We don't want, we, we don't like to see people in pain. I don't want to be in pain, so we, we hate to see people suffering needlessly. Amen. So we're going to do everything we can to fight in the realm of the spirit for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can't be a true minister of God if you don't love people. Amen. Amen. Because many of the things Jesus is documented in the scripture that Jesus had compassion. Yes. And that motivated him to do what he did. Yes. It was not trying to be super spiritual. It was compassion. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So the love of God motivates us to do the right thing. Because you never know when you're going to need some mercy. Yes. You never know when you're going to need somebody to pray you through. Yes. Because if the truth be told, we all need prayer. Yes. We all need prayer. Yes. Yes. We're going to, oh my God. But as we get ready to go into our text, remember this. Signs, wonders, and miracles don't just happen. There's an atmosphere that is created in your personal time with the Lord that has to establish things. When these things become a lifestyle, then it becomes a, a continuous flow. Do you understand that? Once you get into a place where stuff starts happening, do not cut the faucet off. Keep on flowing. Keep on seeking the opportunity. To manifest the presence of God because that's how you were developed spiritually. Yes. Yes. Don't think it's just for a few saved people. Now there are some people that have the gift of healing according to the scripture. But everybody has the ability to bring healing at some point. Does everybody yes. understand? Yes. Yes. Some people have to have a stronger gift of prophecy, but everybody has the ability to prophesy according to the scripture, right? Yes. That's right. So remember that. Somebody say opportunity. opportunity. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to tie this together in a nice little bow. Like only the Holy Ghost can. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4. We're laying the foundation. Now, I say this in videos a lot, but I'm saying this again. As you're sitting here, you're being a partaker of the grace that comes from the pulpit. None of us can preach except we're given a grace and ability that comes with a spiritual anointing. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Without that supernatural anointing, I can't preach. I can't heal. I can't deliver. It's his ability. Yes. So nobody can take the credit for what God does. Amen. We give God the glory yes. for how, how he works through us. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Yes. That's why when the anointed lifts, I can I can be I can just simply be cook. <laughs> now Brenda sees that, <laughs> and she knows that I, I can be cook. Hallelujah! And she keeps me straight. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. 
Thank God for my, my baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we was courting, she saw everybody that was looking. They, they, they saw the they saw the prophet. They saw the man of God, but she saw her. Amen. And I was looking for somebody that saw me and not everything else. Come on, man. that's good. Yes. Hallelujah. And yes, Apostle Young does take out the trash. <laughs> I, I, I do husbandly things. Hallelujah. And that's good. Amen. Somebody say that's good. That's good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, but, but we love us some Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to tie this together in a nice little boat tonight. I've been saying it. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Now, we're going to start off in a specific spot, then we're going to backtrack. All right? Luke chapter 4. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we're going to start at verse number 14. Now, remember, we're going to start there and then we're going to backtrack. Verse 14 says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through, through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, which was his hometown, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me yes. to preach the gospel to the poor. Yes. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Oh, hallelujah. And recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day, somebody say this day. This day. Is this scripture fulfilled in years? Yes. That's confidence, huh? Yes. But that is an acknowledgement that he knew his assignment. Somebody say assignment. Assignment. <laughs> And all men would bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also hear in, this, in thy country. Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. Hallelujah. Now we're going to backtrack. I'm going to tie this together. Somebody say he left one way. He left one way. And came back another way. He came back another way. In other words, he left with one perceived identity. Mm -hmm. And he came back with another identity. Mm -hmm. And we're going to tie this together. Let's backtrack to the beginning of St. Luke chapter 4. Now, to lay the foundation. At the age of 12, the family went on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And they spent their time there. And when they was on their way back, young Jesus stole away from the caravan and he stayed. Now, when they discovered that Jesus was not in the midst of the people, they went back. And they basically tried to rebuke him and tell him some stuff. But he said, what? He had to be what? About his what? Father's business. So, there's a time between the age of 12 and the age of 30 that we don't know a lot about. But we do know, based upon that statement, that he was about the father's business. Did everybody understand? Now, even though there was not much notoriety of what was going on, we know that he was operating according to the will of God for his life. Yep. Of course, he was the copper in the sun, right? Mm -hmm. We call this a time of incubation where he was doing the will of God, but nobody knew anything about it. Come on. And many of you go through times like that right now, whether you realize it or not. You may be going, doing the will of God, but nobody recognizes you. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of recorded stuff in the natural about who you are, but you're still operating in the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say incubation. Incubation. So many of you have found yourself in an incubation.
tribulation period where you are being shielded and protected. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Yes. Everything you're doing is just as much the will of God, but it doesn't bring much notoriety. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. How many of you can relate to that? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jesus understood his assignment. Mm -hmm. He was called the carpenter's son. In other words, he was part of the family business. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we laid the foundation. So we fast forward to the age of 30, where he begins the priesthood. Hallelujah. Let's go. Now, we're going to pick up after the water baptism of John. We don't see a recording here that, that I can see, but I know in Matthew chapter 4, he went, to, he went to the river Jordan, was baptized by John. Immediately, the Spirit of God came upon him like a dove, yes. the Holy Ghost. Yes. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Now, let's pick up where that. Let's pick up where that. Look. Verse 1. And Jesus being full of, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Wow. The Spirit will lead you into some very challenging places. How many of you being led by the Lord are going through your wilderness experience? That's all right. We can improvise. Hold on. Let's get this. Well, hallelujah. Hello? <laughs> I'm going to try this one more time. Here, let me help you. Hallelujah. Because I move around a lot and stuff happens. And it's all right. It's all good, you guys. All good. Thank you. All right. So, being full of the Holy Ghost, being led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Somebody say wilderness. wilderness. How many of you have gone through what you call, some of you may be in your wilderness experience right now. Amen. Where everything out of Hades is coming at you. You're making a transition from one period of your life into a time where God wants to promote you, but you got to go through the wilderness in order to get there. Does somebody understand that? He was led by the Spirit. Now, mind you, it's important to understand that he was full of the Holy Ghost before he went in. Which gave him the ability to stand the test of 40 days and 40 nights. Now, 40 symbolizes, hallelujah, a period of testing, trial, and then finally, somebody say trial. Okay, all right. All right, that's my amen. Amen. And it's a period of testing, trial, or probation. Hallelujah. And we all go through our wilderness experience. That's the time you're going to go through some of your greatest tests, your greatest trials during those times. On the way, somebody say on the way. On the way. To your promotion. Yes. Do not give up. In your wilderness experience. Amen. I feel this strongly to speak over to yes. somebody. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness. Now this was the catalyst for what would happen in verse number 14. And we're going to tie this together. He returned in the power of the spirit and there went out fame of him through all the region as he was coming out of the wilderness now I could have just read all the rest of that but listen <laughs> we don't want we, we don't want to poach it fry it bake it you understand the story of Jesus in the wilderness I'm going to illustrate a point after he came through that time of testing he came in the power of the spirit which means before he went through that he didn't have the power does everybody understand that? That's right. So he's making a transition. That's right. That's right. In the time of testing, God is imparting something very powerful in the inside of yes, That's right. That's right. Somebody say process. Process. We have to go through the process in order to get the power. Yes. Oh my Jesus. Yes. 
When he left Nazareth the first time, he was the carpenter's son. Yes, Lord. Yes. But when he came back, he operated in a different dimension. Yeah, yeah. He had the same physical characteristics, yeah. but his season had changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
You must have disobeyed somewhere for all the trouble that you're going through right now. Somebody say the devil is alone. Amen. Yes. So being led by the Spirit is a very important component to you being able to deal with tests and trials. Because the Spirit Himself will sustain you. Yes. Yes. There's times that God's told me stuff, told me stuff that when I was going through my testing, I couldn't even talk to anybody. Else. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Amen. because they wouldn't even understand it. Amen. Because they think I'm lying. Amen. Does everybody understand it? Yeah. How many of you been in a place where even if you wanted to, you couldn't explain Amen. what's going on with you? Right. It's almost like some strange thing happened on you. Amen. Then you be trying to find every scriptural reference <laughs> to, try, to try to justify or figure it out. But a rainbow word. Somebody say rainbow. A rainbow word. I've had to learn that when God tells me something, he will not lie. Now you got to remember when God tells you that he's going to do such and such and such and such. That's from the time that he spoke it. And then everything else that happens in between that don't make any sense. Come on, come on. <laughs> on the other side, that word will still stand. Amen. 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 You do not need a word from the Lord when you got it going on like that and everything's okay. Mm -hmm. God will tell you something, and there's a whole bunch of distance between what He said and when they bring that bring it to the past. Amen. I'm trying to keep from running around here. Right Hallelujah. Oh, okay. God. Jesus. God cannot lie. Come on, Amen. say Because we live in a day that many times people would, would do what they want and, tr and try to put God in it. Come on. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about that. Amen. This is why relationship is so important. Yes. That's it. You need to know what thus saith the Lord. Yes. You got the logos. And you got the rainbow. Yes. Amen. You got the word on principle, and then you got the word where God speaks something directly to your spirit. Amen. And you need to remember those things. Mm -hmm. Now remember, being led of the spirit is very powerful because it's the spirit, the spirit of God who will sustain you in everything. Amen. Do not spend a whole bunch of time trying to prove yourself. Amen. No. Amen. No. Do not spend a lot of time trying to justify your possession. Come on. Because if God is for you, yes. who in the world is against you? I put that in. Who is against you? Somebody say nobody. Nobody. Now prayer, what it actually does, it promotes you. Now you want to graduate. From praying specifically for needs and praying about intimacy. Yes. Now, once you've seen God deliver you over yes. and over yes. and over and over again, sooner or later you need to get the memo yes. that everything's going to be okay. Yes. And once you get the memo that everything's going to be okay, then you can get back to resting in Him. Yes. This is strong for some yes. You need to rest in Him. If he did it last month, he's going to do it again. All right. This month. Amen. Amen. He may use a different way of getting it done. Yes. But nonetheless, it's the same God. Yes. Come on. Resources change. But the source does not. Amen. And you may find yourself beating yourself over there because you figured out God did this way, that he's just got to do it this way. No, no. That's right. God is bigger than your plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen that. Yeah. Yes. How? Because I was the type of person that would be up half the night wondering how stuff was going to get done. Mm -hmm. And bring me somewhere to sleep. Oh. <laughs> I'll be looking at and saying, how can you sleep? Now say the no sister be She said, he, you say, God doesn't sleep so so she said, so, okay. so, so one of us got to get some sleep. And I'm telling on myself. 
But I have to learn. Somebody say process. Process. But what it does, it solidifies your faith yes. in the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then once you come to the place, then you can pray about you can pray yes. about more important things like the needs of others. Yes. 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 You can start praying and interceding for the needs of others, and you can focus on the task at hand. Because some somebody needs to know that when we seek you first, yes. the kingdom of God. Yeah. And his righteousness, which means right standing. Yeah. All the other things yeah. will be added, which brings me to another point. Yeah. The purpose and the assignment that God has given you has provision built into it. Yes. Yes. Because when we operate within the realm of obedience, it opens up doors yeah. for you. Yeah. Because many people pray based upon the need and not the purpose. If God blesses your need out of the will of God, you're going to need him to do it again and again and again. But purpose itself brings everything into proper alignment. So it's proper alignment. Proper alignment. What is your purpose before the Lord? What is your assignment? What has God called you to do? The mission itself brings the provision because God has got to sustain you doing what he tells you to do. Yes. Amen. It would be a contradiction for God to tell you to do something and not make the way for it. Because yeah. yeah. they want to understand it. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yes. Can somebody say, chill out. Chill out. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> chill out, y'all. Know what the purpose is for your life. Yeah, know what you was created to do. And in the process of doing that, God will fulfill his end of the bargain. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We lift our hands before you. So we see a shift. Because from the age of 12 to 8 to 30, will be considered more of a mediocre time. But he was still doing the father's business. Then when a level of intensity in those 40 days came, he was closer to being empowered in the spirit. How many of you want power from God? So guess what? You got a wilderness experience that you need to go through. If Jesus was doing, somebody say, me, you're going to go through the same thing. Hallelujah. But know that you're going through on the way to your promotion. And you need to hold on to that for, for revelation. Lift your hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the release to stop. Because once the Holy Ghost stops and I'm up, then guess what? <laughs> I said, Lord, help me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want everybody to rest on your feet. And as you rest on your feet, the time that we've spent before the Lord is going to pay dividends. Now, we've testified of all the things that God has done. God has done through us as far as miracles and healings, but it's nothing for me personally if God does not use you to do the same things. Amen. Yes, I get excited, but the reason why, understand my heart, the reason why I say things, because it's supposed to build faith in every one of you that listen to those things. Amen. Yeah. Your faith is elevated, meaning that you can do the same things. Yes. Amen. When you leave out of here today, you have an assignment. Whether it's for one person or a hundred. Everybody in here has several abilities. Everybody don't have the same level of ability, but everybody have the ability to do what needs to be done. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, as everybody comes to the altar, we're going to take the time to speak over you, we're going to pray over you, we're going to anoint you for the new season in your life.